Hi guys and welcome to this video. I promised you a little bit earlier on I was going to show you how to configure a dolphin bar and I like to get a Wii remote to play arcade light gun games. So I'm going to show you how to be able to set up your system so you do this. So let's go over to the table and let's find out what we need to be able to set up your arcade machine to be able to play like this. So what you're going to need in this video to play light gun games authentically on your arcade 1UP or Raspberry Pi, you're going to need a few things. First of all, you're going to need a Wii Remote. Now it's really important that you get a Wii Remote that's an official one, normally looking like this with Wii at the bottom. Do not use a third party, second hand, a third party cheapy one because they just don't work. Don't even bother, it took me hours to figure that out. You do not want one of these, so we're going to get rid of that. Like that. You need an official Wii remote. You also need a keyboard. You definitely need a keyboard for this because you need to access some of the uh, main functions using the keyboard. So you need a keyboard for this. So either plug it in uh, to the USB port using the USB hub or you can use a Bluetooth keyboard. And there'll be another video coming up on how to uh, connect Bluetooth keyboards to your Raspberry Pi. To make it look a bit more authentic, you also need a shell for a gun. So I picked this up on eBay. This was a couple of quid. It wasn't much. It's a nice cheapy gun for a shell. Uh, and it'll enable me to play the light gun games properly. You're also going to need one of these that I'm going to flash up on the screen. Now, this is a Dolphin Bar. Uh, this is the one that plugs directly into your Raspberry Pi. Now, there are wireless ones available. However, I can't vouch for them working. So what I've gone with is a wired one. And this works absolutely fine for me. If you buy it from the link underneath, then it is an affiliate store. So I will get a couple of pence for... for getting it through my video but you don't need to you can bet it wherever you want as long as it looks like this you'll be absolutely fine so now we've got the bits that we need let's move on onto the arcade one up and start getting this thing put together so the first thing that you want to do with your dolphin bar is get it hooked up to your raspberry pi i've got it hooked into one of the usb ports inside so it goes up underneath my marquee it goes up underneath my marquee and it goes into the raspberry pi uh, and then as long as it's hooked up there emulation station will pick it up I have stuck it upside down, just underneath my marquee there, and this works perfectly fine. You don't have to invert any controls or anything like that, which is something we'll come to later on, but you just stick it on there, and it's absolutely fine. You've got your power button on the back, which is obviously on, and you set the... Uh, and then you're also going to set where whereabouts on your arcade you've got it. So in this case, it's at the top, so I'm going to flick it to top. You've got the sync button that you're going to use to sync up to your... To your uh, Wii remote, but first I've got it into mode two. So if you press this button, it cycles through the modes. Three, four, one, two. Mode two works the best for me, so that's the one I'll leave it in. It also helps when you want to do the light gun games on NES games, and I'll show you that as well in this video. Uh, but leave it in mode two, sync it up to the Wii remote. And then when you've got it synced up to your Wii remote, when you sync it up, you want to read the instructions and you want to get your buttons to have number one and number four lit up on your Wii remote. Uh, this changes by pressing a combination of the down and up button when, when with the home when, when you're installing it. But you want number one and number four button along with mode two on there. Then that should work. Then I'm going to show you how to get... That means it's synced up to the Dolphin Bar once that's done. Now I'm going to show you how to get Raspberry Pi to recognise it. And for that, we're going to move over to the computer. So you've got everything all set up, you've got your lights all hunky-dory, you've probably crashed your arcade machine a couple of times, but that's absolutely fine, that's normal when you cycle through the uh, the settings on your Dolphin Bar. You need to get your Wii Remote configured, so if it doesn't come up automatically like what it should do, excuse my English there, if you press the Start button, go down to Configure Input, and are you sure then, well yes you are, and it could automatically detect it, if not, if you just keep your finger on one of the buttons on the Wii Remote, and it comes up as a keyboard. Don't worry about that. That is just how it detects itself. You only need this to move around the uh, to move around the actual uh, menus. Don't worry too much about that. Then you just put in your config. So up, down, left, and right. This is all on your Wii remote. Choose the buttons on the Wii remote you want to do as you start and select. A and B. Now the trigger button won't work. Don't worry too much about that. But it does register it when you do it in the actual game. So don't worry about that. But A and B is normally one and two. And just skip the rest. And the hotkey button is what I normally put as the home button on the Wii Remote. Just press that. Job is a good one. So that is how you configure your Wii Remote. And now if you use your Wii Remote, you will see 
the Wii Remote actually controls all the buttons, so you can select the games through the Wii Remote route, actually having to touch your control or your control panel you've got on your arcade machine. So after that, we're going to show you how to configure your arcade-like gun games. So that's coming up next. So you've got your Dolphin Bar all plugged in there to the uh, Raspberry Pi. It's set on mode 2. You've got your Wii Remote synced up with 1 and 4 buttons on there. And now what we need to do is we need to go over to find the light gun games. Now in the light gun games that I've got on here, I'm going to show you how to configure the arcade ones first. So we're going to go and find an arcade machine, arcade game. So let's find Operation Wolf, a good old favourite. And we'll just give that chance to load up. Now I'm actually using my Wii Remote here to uh, access and load all these games. So you can see it works as a standard controller as well. So at this point I've got my keyboard hooked up as well, because you do need a keyboard for this. And you can see we've got the, uh, the the pointer on the screen there. So in this button, if we press the tab tab button on your keyboard, it will open up this screen. Now this isn't the RetroArch screen, this is the main control panel. And what we want to do is we want to do the input for this game. It's down button, down button and enters to do this. Just press enter. So we can do whatever we want to need. So if we want to do the one player start, if we want to choose one of the buttons on our and our Wii Remote to be a start button, you just press enter and configure it and press whatever button you want. If we want to put a coin in, we can press another button. Uh, button one, because there's two buttons on Operation Wolf, because you've got your trigger button and you've got your uh, missile button as well. So trigger button is button one. So if we press enter and press the trigger button, it's classed as a mouse B1 when you set it up like this, so don't worry about that. And then we're going to P1, press enter again, and press the A button. And there we go. Leave all the rest as they are and return to the prior menu. Then we're going to go to return to game. And you'll see from this screen that I'm putting up now, you'll see that if I press the uh, button that I set as the coin button, it's putting credit in. If I press the start button, it'll start it. It's all with the Wii remote. And then you'll see from the gameplay footage I'm going to show you now, it is actually the it shows you the crosshairs on the screen and that's me controlling it using the Wii remote. It's as simple as that for the arcade games. So you've just got to go through all the games that you're you want to set up as your arcade. You're going to don't forget to press the tab button and change the uh, the input general screen for the buttons that you've got relevant to that game. And then when you come out and return to game and come out of it, it'll save your settings for next time. Easy. So like I said a little bit earlier, you can also play NES like gun games as well, the Zapper games. So you need to find an NES game that you want to do that with. Obviously, good old Duck Hunt, so we're going to load that up. And then once we've loaded that up, you need to go into the RetroArch menu. Now, whatever you button configuration you've set up to do that, however, by default, it is Select and X. So if you press them two buttons and go into the menu, and this gives you the quick menu. Now, from here, you need to go down into Options. Now, down in the Options, you need to go down to the bottom and make sure your Zapper mode is set to Mouse and your Show Crosshair is set to Enabled. So that's mouse and enabled. Then once you've done that, if you come out of that, then you need to go down to controls. So in here, guys, when you're in the control menu, user one device type needs to be auto and user two device type needs to be zapper. Because remember the old NES, you needed to plug the zapper into the controller two port for it to work. So we're telling the emulator that's what we're going to do as well. When you've set that, you want to save the game remap file. Make sure you click that one because if you don't, if you select the one above it, it will rewrite this for every single NES game in your system. You don't want that. You want to save the game remap file. Then when you've saved that, you need to come down to configuration override. Save the game overrides. And then when you go into the game, when you go back into the game, you'll see... You'll see that you've got the icon, the uh, the cursor appear on the screen using your Wii remote. And then we use the trigger button to fire. And there we go. And it's as simple as that, guys. And you can do that with any NES game that you want that uses a zapper. Now, there is talk of Mega Drive games being available at the moment, uh, being available to be done. But I'm yet to figure out how to do that. 
and stuff like the, Nint the Nintendo Super Scope and things like that. But as soon as they become available, I'll let you guys know how we do it. But thanks for watching. I hope that's been an interesting video for you. And I will see you next time on Noob Game Reviews.